Reading with your kids. Hola, Nia, Konnichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Jumbo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are so excited to be coming to you today from beautiful Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. Thanks so much for being part of our Reading with Your Kids family. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and to subscribe to our newsletter. We have a wonderful guest for you today coming to us from Burbank, California. Her name is Pragya Tomar and she is the author of Babu and Bina at the Ghost Party. We are really excited. We have a brand new Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read to introduce you to. You've heard us talk about the Certified Great Read program. We have a panel of great evaluators who come together. If they believe that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a Certified Great Read. This is a great program that helps your book stand out amongst the crowd of children's books that are published every single month. Today we are celebrating the latest addition to our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read Hall of Fame, Leah and Otto, my brother and me. It's a beautifully written and illustrated picture book. I've written by Fene Loman. You've heard her on the show and illustrated by Fuji Takashi. This book teaches children the importance of adoption and welcoming new siblings into the home. You know, we love books that open up doors to a rich conversation and this book does not disappoint. Leo and Otto is a story about a big sister waiting for her little brother to be brought home. Now, Leah and Otto is written for kids ages 2 to 8, but we believe that older children will enjoy it just as well. We think it's a great addition for any family that is considering adoption, for any family that has already adopted, for any family that knows someone, uh, knows another family that's welcome an adopted child into their home. I, you know, if this book is, is great for any family library. Check it out today. Our latest Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read, Leah and Otto, My Brother and Me by Fene Loman. Joining us on the line right now from Los Angeles and California. I'm so excited because I was just in our guest neighborhood just a few weeks ago. It's a beautiful neighborhood and she's incredibly talented. She's, we're, we're here today to talk about her book, Babu and Bina at the Ghost Party. Please welcome to the show, Pete Tomar. Pragya, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you. I was, uh, we, her, her, uh, our guest pen name is P. Tomar. Her name is Pragya Tomar. So I'll be, I, I feel weird referring to people like by their initials. So we're, <laughs> I'll be referring to her as Pragya. And, and we're excited she's here because in addition to writing a book, she's an, an incredibly talented artist and she's been, been involved in a lot of projects that have probably made their way into your home without you even being aware of it. So why don't we first begin our conversation by, by having you tell us about this great new book, Babu and Bina at the Ghost Party. Um, first of all, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Mm-hmm. And, um, this is my first picture book, my first adventure. It's called Babu and Bina at the Ghost Party. Um, this is about two curious young elephant siblings, Babu, the brother, and Bina, the sister, and they, stum- they go and visit a fort um, in India and they stumble upon the ghost of Maharaja when they get trapped into a dark cavern. And that's when the adventure begins. Wow. Um, <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds fun. Uh, a couple of elephants traveling to India and encountering a ghost. I'm imagining all sorts of, of fun ad- adventures follow. Yes, this book is full of adventures. Um, uh, the kids are very curious. They want to find out um, new places in the fort. And then they enter a cave and it's dark and spooky. And the ghost of the Maharaja is very friendly. They're friendly ghosts, so they make new friends. Um, they uh, have a party with them and then they come out by the evening. And But they learn a little bit about India. They learn a little bit about the history and they also have a spooky adventure. And, um, yeah, I, I think kids are going to like this book. Um, it has a lot to offer. It's, um, it's full of fun. Yeah, 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 lots of fun. And I th- I'm, I'm guessing one of the motivations for you to write this book is to 
uh, as a great way to introduce people to the beautiful country of India. Yes, yes, definitely. Like, um, I, I grew up in India and I mostly read uh, books that were written by British authors and authors from other countries such as The Jungle Book, Archie's, Phantom, Nancy Drew, Milson Boone. And, and um, I read a very few Indian books um, like Amar Chitra Katha and I felt um, we have a lot of uh, room for new kinds of stories with fresh ideas, new characters and new kinds of adventures. And that's my daughter inspires me to write every day. And she keeps asking me about what's India like? How, how did you like when you were little? What did you do? Was everything like today? Uh, and I was like, no, it was quite different. And I and she inspired me and I was like, we should write more stories and and kids can enjoy a fresh perspective, um, new kinds of characters, new kinds of settings and uh, and family fun at the same time. And I, I thought this book has a lot to offer in those mm-hmm. uh, in those uh, aspects. Yeah. yeah. One of the reasons I love books like Babu and Bina at the Ghost Party is because it's it's a wonderful way for families to become introduced two different cultures and in different different ways of living and it's i i mean just if if reading this book just starts a conversation in a family and sparks a little bit of curiosity for a family to delve in more even if they just go to wikipedia and and you know check out the india wikipedia page and 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 if they discover for example that there's and i'm i'm going to get the number wrong but I think there's 27, 28 different official languages in India. It's yes. probably more than that. And, yeah. and, and that it's this huge country with a huge population. And, and, and you can't even just say India is like this because every corner of India is different. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, I grew up in New Delhi, and New Delhi is more like a cosmopolitan city like L.A., uh, where all kinds of people live. But there are, I mean, 70,000 villages. Um, there are different states. Each state has its own language, different kinds of foods. I mean, you could actually spend a whole year trying different cuisines every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of stories, a lot of different kinds of um, adventures. And um, uh, in fact, like, I, I thought... Um, I'm very grateful to live in a country where uh, so much diversity, so much uh, um, there's so much room to share cultures, and and because of this multicultural aspect, I I thought like uh, the world is going global these days. Mm-hmm. Everything is everyone is connecting with everyone from all over the world, and why not? There is this is a perfect time to introduce new kinds of stories, and uh, and 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 I'm very grateful. Um, I I love living in Burbank where. I mean, I, my whole workplace is full of people like from different countries and we have so much to talk about. Uh, we have so much to talk about different languages and foods and fun and um, family values. And, and and at the core, at the core, everyone, you know, want to tell stories to their kids and, and they want the kids to learn something, to have fun and also to be more accepting mm-hmm. in this. Like, like my daughter goes to school and her class is full of different kinds of um, uh, cultures and uh, and kids speaking different languages and and this book offers like some insight some uh, some value uh, uh, of diversity of of like accepting uh, and understanding different cultures and not be like segregated in groups mm-hmm. but rather enjoy each other and and I thought um, yeah this um, and and we lack a lot of stories from Southeast Asian culture and I thought there is a there's a lot of room to fill that in, and even TV shows and movies. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And one of the reasons that I loved it, and and we got to know India, our family, our kids in a different way. I, I think I've mentioned on the podcast before. We actually sponsored a young man through his seminary training to become a Catholic priest, and he was living in Kerala, and and so we've actually built a relationship with this this amazing young man he uh, recently was awarded the jewel of india award for the uh, work that he's been doing uh, bringing education and clean water and medical services to andhra pradesh and um you know so so in, in learning about the differences in in india and learning that 
within India, there are all these other differences. We also, and our kids also quick, quite quickly understand that, yeah, there, there are different languages and there's different clothing and there's different food, but right at the core, we're all the same. You know, exactly. we, we very quickly had a very quickly had a relationship with this with Joby because, you know, we found out that he loves his family and he loves school. And uh, we had uh, a, a connection with, with that. We we had the same religion. And 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 so it like you said, the world is getting smaller. And I think that's a wonderful thing because it, it helps us ex- experience our differences but it much more importantly helps us experience that we are all human beings and we share that humanity. And that's so important for our kids to understand. I agree. I completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> now you mentioned, you mentioned that you love living in Burbank and I love, I, I, I love my time, um, in, in Burbank. Uh, it was just a super community. And you mentioned your workplace, but you didn't mention what you do. And what you do is so cool because you help create uh, a program that I'm guessing uh, 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 has been seen in a lot of the houses uh, of the folks that are listening. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and what you're working on? Um, Sure. So uh, I'm a visual effects artist. Um, I basically, um, I'm sure you have seen Cloudy with a chance of me because or Bolt, or Shimmer and Shine, and um, Kung Fu Panda. So all these movies are 3D movies, uh, and what I do is I light these movies. I do lighting, I do compositing, I do rendering. So what we do is basically um, live the environment, like in the sense it's sunset time, or uh, night time, or morning time, and, and we kind of infuse that uh, atmosphere and lighting in the, in yeah. the shot. Yeah. We, it's very creative. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's actually very satisfying. I had we uh, we had a uh, my my niece Jimena and I had a chance to sit down. Uh, we were celebrating my son's engagement with his. The engagement party was here in our home, and um, one of the guests was a visual artist, a three D effects artist who had just finished working on uh, in the Avengers movie that my my niece and I had just watched. And we sat down and he was telling us about this one scene that we loved that he actually worked on. And he was explaining to us that it took three or four weeks to create like 15 seconds of the scene. And we're just kind of like blown away by that. Yes, yes. Um, Yeah, it, it can take up to one month to actually work on one shot which is like two seconds or four seconds on feature films because they want the quality. They want it to be so good because it's, it's like advancing with every movie you see. There's something new, something even better that you see. And it's, it's like cutting edge and <laughs> it takes a lot of time. It's a complicated um, pipeline, uh, but it's so much fun at the same time. Like when you see your work on the big screen, it's just worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, w- one of the reasons, and, and, and this isn't, this isn't the, um, uh, the conversation to, to really delve into this too deeply, but I am a huge believer in families, not only families reading with their kids, but I also think it's really important for families to watch and experience media with their kids together. Uh, because, you know, we're bombarded with so much media and it's becoming more and more sophisticated, more and more realistic. And as parents, as as much as we, it's it's our responsibility to help our kids uh, become uh, ready for reading and and help them develop their vocabulary, it's also important for us t- to help our kids understand what media is and to become media literate and to help them understand what's going on and how their feelings can be manipulated by different media, sometimes for good and entertainment, but sometimes not for so good and, you know, to because someone's pushing an agenda or wants them to buy something. So that's just my plug right now while <laughs> taking a little bit of time away. I, I, I really want to encourage uh, families sit down, learn a little bit more about media literacy and talk to kids about this and talk to kids about what goes uh, what goes into making all those shows that, that fascinate them uh, because I think it's very, very important. 
But now back to Babu and Bina at the ghost party. What's the reaction been to folks that have experienced this? Um, so far, I've got really good reviews. Um, the book has uh, just recently launched on January 20th. Uh-huh. And um, it's been number one new release. I'm very grateful uh, for six weeks now. And uh, even before the uh, release, it's been it's been received very well. And people have uh, gotten back to me. They've sent messages. They've written reviews. Um, I sent the book to a couple of bloggers on Instagram. And so far, the reaction from the students, from the teachers, they just have it in their libraries. And they, whenever they want to talk about India or some kind of diversity or some kind of spooky adventure during Halloween, they... They, they just have this book ready for, for that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very glad and I'm very happy that, uh, this book has been received well so far. And yeah. I'm very excited. <laughs> that's, that's really great. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing now, now this book, it, it's about India. It was produced by someone who was born in India. Uh, but it was published here in, in America and it's being sold here in America. I would not be surprised if we see more and more books coming out of India because, believe it or not, India, the, the, the folks in Bollywood produce more movies than we produce in Hollywood. Is that right? Yes, that's yeah, correct. That's, it's, it's just such, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a huge, huge industry in India. The whole movie making industry and media industry in India is really huge. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they start getting into the children's book area. I, I agree. And, yeah. and there's, we have a billion population and kids just, kids are just doing so well there. Like, um, and, and they are ready for new stories. They're ready for new adventure. And, and I'm sure we can fulfill some of the curiosities, uh, by keep writing. I, I want to keep writing, uh, more books. In fact, I have my second book ready. Uh-huh. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to launch it on February 25th. That's why. Right. Give us a little preview of the new book. Uh, the, uh, the second book is on the same series. So the characters are same, Babu and Dina. And, but this book has more family fun. And uh, uh, Bina wants to be a princess. She looks at a TV show. And uh, she, she sings a rhyme uh, in, this, in the book. And I'll just... Um, I, I'm, I'm just going to sing a little uh, sure. rhyme. I'm a royal princess. I wear a silky gown to serve the royal princess. Just bow before my crown. So uh, she wants to be a princess. And, um, and, and yeah, but then during the course of the days, she realizes that it's more important to be kind, mm-hmm. um, to be, um, to be, to have fun, to be yourself. Yep. So the message in this book, and I had, some moral in the story this time is, uh, yeah, to be yourself mm-hmm. and to be kind. Awesome, awesome. Well, tell everybody where they can check out your website. I'm, I'm looking at your website right now. It's beautiful. The illustrations uh, from the book are great. And so where can people go online to connect with you and learn more about the books coming from P. Tomar? Uh, so my website is um, www.penmagicbooks.com. Dot com, and you can um, subscribe to my newsletter and I would be happy to send you more information. Uh, also, I want to say thank you to my illustrator, uh, Julia Aikopani, and I think she she is just wonderful. She did this book. Um, she worked very hard on my notes. I gave her a lot of notes. I wanted it to be really good <laughs> and uh, and she worked really hard and I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful and Excellent. <laughs> Say her name again because uh, the, the 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 Skype ghost kind of kind of uh, fuzzed you out there for a minute. So give give her credit again, please. Yes, please. Um, so uh, the illustrator for um, these two books is uh, my friend Julia Icopini. Uh huh. She's Italian and she lives in Rome um, and now in Dublin. Sorry. And wow. um, she's she's wonderful. She yeah. has done lots of books and. Uh, it took almost a year to do this book. Like mm-hmm. I gave her so many notes to, I wanted like this, I wanted to be specific and I wanted to show the best. And, but, um, she was very, she was just thorough and hardworking and, uh, I couldn't have, I, I think she's the best illustrator for this kind of book. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. And, and talk about stress 
having someone who's a visual effects artist trying to trying to illustrate for her that was you know that's would be a lot a lot of, uh, a whole lot of stress on my head if that was the situation but Julia did a wonderful job the books are wonderful the website is great and we are so happy we had this wonderful time to chat with you We've been talking today to the author of Babu and Bina at the Ghost Party, P. Tomar Pradya. Thank you so much for being part of our show. You're very welcome. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be the author of The True History of Lindy B. Hawkins. Her name is Gail Page Shepard. Hey, if you are the author of a great children's book, we would love to help you tell the world all about it. You know, one of the best ways to do it is by being a guest on the show. Being a guest is fun, it's easy, and it costs you absolutely nothing. You can learn more about being a guest on the show by going to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the contact button, let us know about your great book. We'll let you know the next steps. Hey, I want to thank, you know, I always, I always, at the end of the show, I always thank our guest, but I've been omitting somebody, so I want to thank our guest, Pregya Tomar, but I also want to thank my amazing associate producer, Fatima Khan, she is so very, very important to this show, so a big thank you to Pregya Tomar, big thank you to my associate producer, Fatima Khan. And of course, a great big thank you to you. Thank you so much for joining us today, and as always, Thank you so much for helping to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.